Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Water shortages in Cape Town are starting to take their toll on the economy. Natasha Woodendahl joins me to discuss the current situation. Hi Natasha. Hi. The ongoing drought is impacting on Cape Town's tourism economy. Can you unpack the current situation? Sure. Well, at the moment there are some concerns um, about the tourism levels in Cape Town at the moment. A lot of tourists are deciding to forego Cape Town as a destination uh, for their holidays or business or otherwise because they're worried about you know, placing undue burden on Cape Town's water resources. Um, you know, holiday makers, international holiday makers are cancelling entire trips to South Africa um, because of you know, the four or five days that they spend in Cape Town isn't making it worth their while you know, to, to tour the rest of the country if they can't do that. Um, so it is placing a bit of burdens on the tourism industry at the moment and it's a concern because the you know, tourism supports or sustains 300,000 jobs. Um, it brings in 40 billion rand a year to the economy and with that dwindling it may make Cape Town a little bit harder to you know, push through the already you know, um, struggling economy that they've got at the moment. And, you know, with tourism struggling, I mean, a lot of people are saying that the tourism industry can actually help at the moment because the agricultural sector is struggling quite badly. I mean, obviously, they're cutting back on their water use they're in, in Cape Town. They're also losing a lot of jobs because of this drought. Um, and if we can pick up tourism again, then they can actually try and help, you know, mitigate the impact on Cape Town's economy. The city is taking the opportunity to use this dire situation as a benchmarking moment. Yes, um, they actually are. It's an interesting angle that they're taking at the moment. Um, because they're sitting in this situation where there, it's a possibility that they might run out of water. They say it's unlikely, but it's still a possibility. Um, with climate change and everything happening at the moment, and a lot of cities likely to go through the situation that Cape Town's going through right now, the city of Cape Town is actually looking at it as an opportunity to create an international benchmark for what to do when facing a situation like this. Um, I mean, Cape Town is facing day zero. It's a possibility they'll have to switch off their taps in May. Um, they're trying to do everything they can to avoid that. And then what they do in the interim until that point, I mean, the whole world is watching. They're all going to sit and look at Cape Town and say, okay, how did they do it? How are they going to do it? How are they going to make sure those taps stay on? And one key thing that they're actually trying to do now is they're trying to create a playbook to say, you know, this is what a high growth tourism economy does in the midst of one of the biggest challenges they've ever faced, you know, resource scarcity. Um, they're working now to put in place a lot of uh, measures and procedures to ensure that they don't run out. And they are going to show the world, or they, they're attempting to show the world, that they can do it, that this is what we'll do, and just follow our lead if you run into trouble. Um, a lot of people saying that, you know, places like Sao Paulo, Los Angeles, they're all also facing droughts, they're all, all also facing water so shortages. So it's, it's not a problem that is unique to Cape Town. It's a worldwide problem in the midst of climate change. What is the city doing to avoid day zero and what contingency plans are in place should the taps run dry? At the moment, they're obviously trying to look at, at ways of making sure that residents and anybody who's in Cape Town at the moment reduce their water usage. The main thing that's been focusing on is bringing a, the per person usage down to 50 litres a day. Uh, a lot of the stats are saying that if they can bring that down to 50 litres a day, which will equate to 450 million litres of water per day in Cape Town, they can avert the whole day zero scenario. Um, it wouldn't have to happen. But obviously, I mean, it's not an easy thing to do to get everybody, all the residents, to change their approach to using water. I mean, it's, it's a, quite a limitation on water. Businesses are struggling. Um, so the uh, tourism industry, uh, you know, tourism and hospitality industries are also trying to lead the way in that. They're trying to, you know, reduce all the usage at their hotels, you know, stop um, using linen, um, reducing the amount of washing they're, they're doing, um, encouraging residents not to bath, rather to shower, um, and also putting in, you know, water management devices within the hotels. They're almost, it's as if they're leading the way in the situation. Um, the city of Cape Town as well has gone, obviously, on their own, own campaigns for water usage um, to reduce it, um, but they're also working on putting in place other you know, sources of water 
Um, at the moment, you know, considering a few years ago, dams were the only source of water uh, for the city of Cape Town to supply water to the city of Cape Town. Um, but now 12% of the water supply in Cape Town is from elsewhere. It's from um, plants or desalination plants, um, aquifers and such like that. So Cape Town is pursuing those avenues as well to make sure that water supply comes in from other sources. It's plans that they've had in for decades. They're just bringing it forward now. They're trying to accelerate all of these plans. Um, they're also continuing with their water throttling. Water tariff hikes is one. They're putting up the price of water also to encourage a reduction in the use. And they've gone on a campaign to try and, you know, recalibrate, if you want, uh, their relationship with water because this is going to be a permanent situation. It's, it's as they call it, the new norm. Um, it's not going away. We're always going to be a water scarce country. So therefore, it's trying to, you know, get people to develop new relationships with water as opposed to wasting it as we do. Now, while the, pe while the city of Cape Town is saying that day zero is unlikely, they're doing all they can to avoid switching off the taps. There are contingency plans in place. They are trying to assure residents, South Africa, the world, that, you know, if it does happen, there is a plan. What their contingency plan calls for is they're going to be placing Cape Town in zones. There are certain zones in Cape Town that will be protected. There are certain business zones um, to ensure that it's not a complete shutdown. And so these certain zones, which are still to be announced, um, will still have municipal supply of water. Their taps will not be switched off, be managed, but it won't be switched off um, to ensure the continuity of business and to ensure that essential services and such continue without any restrictions for water. Um, in the other regions, they will be placing 200 water points um, for residents to collect their, their um, 25 litres to 100 litres a day of water. Um, but also in that case, it isn't um, a matter of, you know, completely cutting off residents only to that. It seems to just be a measure to ensure a complete reduction. So residents can go and collect their 25, 50, 100 litres of water per day. Once they've got that water, they can just go back to the queue and just, you know, go back and get some more. Um, the city won't be asking for any IDs or any such proof of residence and all of that type of stuff. It's just a matter to try and reduce the water use. The hotel industry, um, you know, the hospitality industry in degree also have their own contingencies in plan in place as well. I mean, if water runs out, tourists are still not discouraged from coming because they can make a plan. A lot of the, a lot of the hotels are actually in the business protection zones um, and those that are not are making plans to ensure that their residents, their, their visitors actually have enough water. So tourism shouldn't be an issue in that point in time. And um, there's also obviously encouragement that they just be mindful that there's a drought and not overuse water. Um, but at least, you know, there are, pla there are plans in place to make sure that, you know, citizens will have water. Um, the switch off is only expected to be for a couple of months if it happens, um, just to try and get the water stabilized again. So it's not expected to be a long term thing. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.